Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AllowyTutors.com and welcome to this video on Lewis Acids and Bases. Now in this video we're going to look at what a Lewis Acid and Base is. We're also going to look at what a Metal Aqua Ion is, uh, some examples of Lewis Acids and Bases and also why some transition metal complexes are more acidic than others. So we're going to start with looking at what we mean by an acid and a base. Now you might already know that acids and bases are generally defined as proton donors and proton acceptors. So for example, uh, an acid would be a proton donor and a base would be a proton acceptor. Now this is true for what we call a bronsted lowry theory. And this is the theory of uh, proton theory where we said that acids would give up uh, protons and bases would accept. However, there was a need for another theory to explain other chemicals that didn't have protons that were being donated or accepted, but were still classed as acidic uh, and when tested with a pH meter, they came out as acidic. So a new theory came out by Gilbert Lewis, uh, who is an American scientist, and he came up with an idea of explaining acids and bases in terms of electrons instead. And he named them after himself, because he called them Lewis acids and Lewis bases. So a Lewis acid is an electron acceptor, and a Lewis base is an electron donor. Um, and an example of this um, was this one, where we had ammonia, and we had uh, boron trifluoride. Uh, you can see here that uh, these two will react to form a salt, which is over there. So this is an acid-base reaction. But as you can see here, there's no proton being donated or accepted. What's actually happening, and I've drawn it down here in, um, so we can see what's happening, is the ammonia is effectively donating a lone pair of electrons to the boron here. And this is a dative covalent bond. So because the ammonia is donating electrons, the ammonia is acting as a Lewis base, and the BF3 is acting as an electron acceptor, so therefore it's a Lewis acid. Uh, and these two effectively uh, are a sign of an acid-base reaction. And I've got some more examples here as well where the bronsted lowry proton theory doesn't explain. So for example, water accepting a proton now, this you might think, well, there's a proton being accepted here, but actually, if you look at the molecule carefully, we've actually got a Lewis acid and Lewis base occurring. Now, I've drawn the water molecule in blue, and this tells us that it's a Lewis base, and the water molecule is donating a lone pair of electrons to a proton, which is accepting them. So this is a dative covalent bond, uh, and the proton is effectively an electron acceptor, which means it's a Lewis acid. Same goes for this as well, which is AlCl3. Now, this is a halogen carrier and it's used in reactions. Uh, and effectively, it can react with a chloride ion, which you can see here, and it'll form AlCl4 minus. Uh, the AlCl3 bit is the Lewis acid. It's accepting electrons from a chloride ion, uh, which I've marked up in blue, which represents a Lewis base. So you can see here, actually, it's more common than we think, uh, not just for this example, but even for something like the um, H3O plus ion, which is actually the ion that's responsible for making things acidic. It's actually this that's the um, acidic part of it. Okay, so we're just going to link this now with transition metal complexes. So I've got up here, this is um, an ion, what we call a aqua ion. And this is where we take, say for example, if we take a transition metal compound, and that may be a solid. So for example, I'm gonna use something like iron sulfate, uh, then if we add that to water, what happens is the iron and the sulfur break apart, uh, and then the iron part, the transition metal part, is then surrounded by six water ligands. Now, water is a neutral charge, uh, and therefore the overall charge on this complex is 2 plus. I suppose you can imagine in a way, like if you've got iron, which is like the celebrity, and the sulfate bit is a bit like the car, so the celebrity turns up to... Um, a premier in the car, the celebrity gets out of the car, that's effectively like dissolving this in water, uh, and the car will drive away, leaving the celebrity on their own without the sulfate. Now what happens is the fans, which are like the water molecules, will then go around and surround the celebrity, obviously with all this fame, uh, and that's effectively kind of like what's happening here as well. The sulfate's still there, like the car's still there for the celebrity to be around, but it's not actually with the celebrity. So, for example, the iron is no longer bonded to the sulfate, but the sulfur ion is still in solution. And now the iron is surrounded by uh, water ligands. We call this a metal aqua iron. 
And because we have six of them, we call them a hexa aqua ion, because we have six water molecules or ligands surrounding our transition metal ion. Now, this is what happens when we have any transition metal, it gets surrounded by water. Now, these things are actually acidic when they're in solution. Um, and the reason why is because of the Lewis acid and base theory. Now, obviously, these are acidic, so we're just going to look at the Lewis acid part. So you can see here, we've redrawn out our complex here. This is iron 2. And you can see that we've got a lone pair of electrons, and each of the oxygens uh, on the water have been donated into the transition metal iron. Now, this is uh, evidence of a Lewis acid because the iron in the middle, Fe2, plus, is accepting the electrons. And you can see here the electrons are being pulled in by the positive ion in the middle. And because of this, this effectively weakens this OH bond on the end here. Uh, because the electrons are being pulled further in towards the metal ion, then there's less electrons left on the whole water molecule. And there's like a knock-on effect, we call this a polarizing effect, then the electrons are drawn from here onto the oxygen because the oxygen is electronegative. And as a result, this weakens this OH bond and means this proton is very likely to effectively uh, drop off. Uh, and we call that um, we call that deprotonation. So removing the proton is donating a proton into the solution, and that is what's making it acidic. And that's why the pH meter is picking up H plus ions. So for example, this is our ion 2, what happened is this gets weakened, this gets weaker, it breaks that bond, and then what we have is we have a H plus ion that's then floating around in solution, and this whole thing, the whole complex, then becomes positively charged by one, and we're left with an OH minus group that's left behind with a H plus ion. So this is, this is really what happens, and this is really why uh, transition metals are acidic as well. Now, some complexes are actually more acidic than others. Uh, for example, iron-3 complexes, so such as um, iron-3 oxide, if that was dissolved in water, it form iron-3 uh, hexa-aqua complex. Uh, this is more acidic. And the reason why is because this has got a higher charge density. We've got Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus. Same atom, so same size, but more charged. So therefore, it's going to have a much more of a polarizing effect, and it's going to pull the electrons a lot more towards itself, weaken this bond even more, or weaken more of them, and that means what we'll get, instead of just maybe one or two protons being um, released, this is going to make this bond even weaker, and we're going to get maybe two or even three protons, depending on how acidic it is, probably more likely to be two, uh, and therefore it will produce more H plus ions as a result, and therefore these complexes are more acidic than two plus complexes. Obviously, the smaller the ion as well, um, the uh, more acidic your compound is. So for example, aluminium complexes, even though not a transition metal, uh, aluminium complexes are actually quite acidic as aluminium is a really small uh, atom and also it's got a three plus charge. So it's really, really acidic. So you've got to actually be careful with these, um, with these complexes and because they will irritate your skin if you get them on there. Um, but that's it. I hope that helps. Bye.